Let's take that off. Wild Arms 5. Never heard of this game. PlayStation 2. Cool, cool. Casey Muratori was just talking about it. That's how I came across that. Cool, 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 cool. All right, well, I got a surprise stream tonight because the yesterday's stream kind of sucked. And yesterday's stream, we got stuck uh, wanting to do some texture compression. And I started off. Um, I don't know why that popped up. I started off looking at how to use this STB DXT, but uh, I didn't understand how to use it, I'll be honest. Like, it seems really, seems really hard to use. Um, like, yeah, seems really hard to use. You have to like call STB DXT block for every, for every block. So it's like uh, you have to figure out how to do all that. That's not really what, you know, I mean, that. OK, sure, I can code that up, but it's not really what I feel like doing. <laughs> it's not what I was expecting. So I, I did a little bit of searching and uh, came across this blog post by Aris in uh, the one he mentioned this one that was really fast this ISPC which I went and found the repo for that uh, you can get it here and, and you can you can download the project and you can you can actually get it on your computer and build it and run it and they've got a little I have a breakpoint set, but they've got a little demo. Using and you, these are they're showing you decompress. They're showing you compressed textures. So, and one thing I was I was looking through their imp. Okay, I was looking through their implementation, and one thing I noticed they were doing um, is uh, let's see. Press. Yeah, so they call compressed texture. So what they're doing, they're using direct DirectX 11. So that's that's different than what we're doing. But what they do is they have created their um, their shader resource views. Basically, they've they've in their code they've done the equivalent. They've done the DirectX equivalent of what we've done right here. Okay. Uh, well, uh, equivalent-ish, okay? There's extra stuff that they've done. Uh, but the thing I noticed that's interesting is this part right here. So they have compressed, so they created two shader resource views, and when you, when you create those, um, you're telling it, well, let's see, where does it, where does it create go? Maybe they didn't create it here. But like when they create the texture, they have these um, sorry, losing my train of thought. What am I trying to say here? They went ahead and created the textures on the GPU, didn't necessarily send the data there. And then it, to get like the buffer that they need to put data in, they map the sub resource. So uh, and D D OpenGL has a similar call to map. So basically what's happening is when you call this map, you're telling the GPU, hey, I need to map this thing in a CPU accessible or like application accessible memory, right? And these mapped sub-resource things have a pointer to the data, right? And that's not going to be null. That's going to be a buffer specifically big enough to hold the texture that you created, right? So 
that solves this kind of problem where that I was like belaboring yesterday. I was like, what size to make this? I mean, we could still figure out how to calculate this, but it, like you just let the GPU do that calculation for you. Uh, and that reminded me, so thinking about that reminded me that even though right here we are calling image and passing the data, this can actually be null and it will still just create the buffer on the GPU side that you need. So we could, let's comment this out because we don't need that for right now. And uh, yeah, so we, we could put this as null, right? Okay. Um, and then we could, then we could call map. Uh, we might not even have to. See this part, but uh, so anyway, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought again. Um, so if we go back, you so you can't, yeah, this this can be a null pointer, uh. Data may, data may be, a, let's see if you can see that on stream, but that's under notes. Data may be a null pointer in case, in this case, texture memory is allocated to accommodate a texture. And then you can download subtextures to initialize this one. Okay. So what we need is a, map. What we need is the open jill three map texture. Mm. That's that that's not gonna be what we want. Uh Uh, I was just reading about this, so I got to state. Maybe it's in my notes. I always have so many notes. And they didn't. Finally, values may be read back from the fra frame buffer. Uh, do they have? Do 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 do. Yeah, don't think it's uh, so. We want something like. Open GL uh, map buffer. So there. Let's see. Okay, so we may be hitting, we may be hitting another one of my famous roadblocks. Uh, what are we trying to do? We so we we create the frame buffer, bind it, and then we generate the textures. So like, can it? it Mm. 
Uh, GL map buffer maps a buffer's object data store. So can this be? Is this what we need? Or do we need to get one? Is there one specific for textures? But also, how do you, let's see, GL array buffer? GL texture buffer, okay. GL texture buffer, do we create? All right, uh, let's see. Two thousand five. Somebody asked this question in two thousand five. That's a long time ago. Let's see what this person says. Um Okay. Yeah, we've run in we've run into another thing that I realize I don't know actually how to do. Cuz like if you do map it, we're I'm basically looking for the equivalent of this line like here you've mapped it and you know your data like you can see uh later on well yeah like there's their pointer to the data right so i'm looking for the open gel equivalent of that so like uh maybe there's a Uh, Jill map buffer. Let's see, uh, Jill. All right. Oh, wait. Ah, it's this. I didn't even see that. Throughout most chapters, we've decided to just. Oh, there is this sub data thing. So can so can we do this? All right. It's purely experimental. I have no idea if this is going to work. All right. So we're doing text image null pointer, so we're not giving it the stuff right away. All right. And then before unbinding it, what we'll do is we'll be like, we'll just copy this, this example. We'll be like, you know, put our, put our little macro around it. Uh, and then we want to probably Uh, 
Wait. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like, how does it know which one? But it, it the whatever one is bound, since we're, since this frame buffer is still bound, I would assume then that this map is. Yeah, sorry, I lose my train of thought as I'm as I'm re talking, but this map is it's gonna it's going to. Map whatever buffer is currently bound. That's that open jail state machine coming into play. Yeah, there we go. Wait, that doesn't. I guess this just doesn't work, huh? Hmm. Or does it need to go around the whole thing? What did I? That's what I started off with, right? Okay, apparently that works. Um. All right, so here we've mapped it, and our data is right he is in that pointer. So then, what we could do, then what we would want to do is uh, we would want to say the destination is the pointer. We want to send our our data. Okay, so we still need to know the size. Okay. Okay, so this doesn't actually help us in the way that I would have thought. All right. So we do the mem copy, and then then we want to do this. I hit caps, and then messes things up. Then we want to do this unmap buffer. Okay, and the idea here, is, there's nothing really, there's, there's no big idea here. It's just, we've, instead of instead of passing the data in right here like we did in this commented outline now we're we're doing it here and there's no real reason i just wanted to see if this works uh there's no reason currently for us to do it this way Oh, bummer. Uh, I added some stuff to... Related... I haven't gotten texture compression working, but I started adding the library in. Okay. And then theoretically, uh oh. We got an error. Okay. So one, two, eight, two. It's probably invalid value. If I had to guess, it's invalid value. <laughs> Invalid operation, okay. Uh Oh, that's the wrong one.
Oh, invalid operation if their buffer name is zero, but we, I don't think we want, I don't think that's true. Oh, for data object whose data store is already mapped. Okay, so it could, could have been any one of these three. Um, in, I don't, I don't think it's this first one. Cause like, we know that's not true. We know we did this before that. What is this? What? What does this do? Okay. I can imagine that maybe the one we're hitting is uh, this one, because it, whose data store is already mapped, because we just called this, which technically, if we're passing in data like we did here, like it, it would have to do some kind of mapping in order to enable us to pass in that data. So what I want to try is let's take this stuff and move it outside here. Let's do it right here. So we've unbound that texture. So that should mean that it's not mapped, but we didn't unbind the, the, the buffer yet. We didn't, we did not unbind the buffer yet. So let's see what that does. Uh oh, nope. Still one, two, eight, two. Okay. All right. Let's let's try this. All right. We're gonna unbind the frame buffer. Yeah. But then we're going to oh. I guess we, let's see what happens when you do this. So now we've unbound both of those, but we still, no, no, no. This one doesn't bind, only this one binds. So we've unbound it. Now let's just go back and right away and rebind it. Okay, so we do not know what we are doing. Not surprising. Uh oh. Oh no. Okay. All right. That did not work. What is GL texture buffer? I mean, I thought that would have thought that would have done it. Maybe we don't need to do the bind the frame buffer. Maybe we need to bind the texture. Also, that's
That's not texture 2D, right? I saw someone mention that it's a 1D GL texture buffer. Chill now. That's not quite what I want. All right, well, let's. Gel buffer sub data, maybe that has. All right, so this last couple streams, we are just running into all sorts of problems. Let's see. So bind texture. Copy pixels. Hmm. Is this a way to copy it? Like get it back? So maybe we want... Maybe we want this. Maybe this is what we want. No. 
No, this would be a way. All right. So what this comment says is this is a way to define the image using pixels from the current frame buffer rather than from main memory. So yeah, so main so this one text image 2D which we've already used like that's copying data that we're supplying it for, from the application. This is what you would want to do if you had like two textures on your GPU and you wanted to copy data from one of those to the other one. So this is a GPU to GPU operation, not a we're looking for an application to GPU app, uh, operation. So that's not. Uh, Something maybe this maybe this doesn't maybe uh, OpenGL three might be like no well I mean it says this can be a null pointer but then maybe it's only available on the GPU to have data copied into it hmm. I wasn't expecting to hit this roadblock. And either way, it's not totally solving any problems that we want to solve right now. So I will come back to this. I'm going to ditch this for now. Ditch this for now. Uh... Okay, so we're back to where it works. All right. So I'm gonna bring this. I'm gonna bring this back for now. What we're gonna go do? Just gonna go GL. I'm gonna sneeze. Hold on. You gotta be kidding me. All right, what's this internal format? In terms specifies the format of the compressed image. So width, height. All right, we need to find out what those internal formats are. Hmm, GL compressed. This is all because I'm having a hard time figuring out how much space to allocate here. That's the reality. Right? So, s 
I have no idea what they're doing here. All right. So this data has to be enough. Let's go, let's go see where they, so map sub resource. So here's their staging texture. This is where they created it. And here's their, here's their description. Or that's compressed. Oh, no, yeah, that's the one we want. How do, where do they tell it what size it's going to be? Uh, uncompressed width height. Huh. I wonder if this is null and in here it's. I guess I can hit a break point and see what it does. Oops. It's no, but that doesn't tell us. That doesn't tell us much. It just means that there's nothing in it. I'm going to hit continue. Last time I closed it while well, it was mid breakpoint, it crashed really bad. So it's like PC, PC3. Hmm. Hmm, so how do they figure out? What the size is, right? Is here they're creating. They're creating the texture. Oh, they're getting the description. They've already put it somewhere else. Okay. They're putting it somewhere else. So here they're creating the... So here they're creating a shader resource view from the, from the image. The heck is a scratch image? Okay. So they create one shader resource view for the uncompressed image, I would say. All right, so if we hit All right. Well, Yeah, it crashes real bad. There's, I don't know exactly what the problem is, but it crashes.
when you try to close it. All right, let's let's try this again. So if we do. All right, so here they're going to query it and get get. So. No. All right, so from this width and height, we can gather that it's width height, so one K by one K, and it's uh, R eight G eight B eight A eight, so thirty two bit. So it's gonna be I don't know what to multiply here. It could be like four bit, four byte. Yeah, it's four bytes. Yeah, so that's the size. Okay. That's for that one, right? We already know that one. That's the uncompressed. We have the same thing, so no problems there. <clears throat> but where it's different, let's go to the compression step. Let's go to like here. Here we go. So here's the compression for here's here's the compressed version. So width and heights don't change. This does. It's sRGB. You know it. And I don't know how much space to allocate for that. And that's what I have to figure out. All right. Let's hit continue. All right. This is another one of my terribly slow What was what what format was that? It was like this. Yeah. Bytes for four by four pixel block. Eight. So let's just don't think this has what we want.
Maybe I'm overthinking this. A four component It's four component, but how huh. How should I figure this out? I think there was something that we're not doing BC seven, but Hmm. Huh. Just need to like go for it here. So yesterday we came up with something that's like was it DXT five? All right, and it tells us it's four to one. So like, it seems like we know we need one fourth the data, which is what we did here. So like here, this is gonna allocate it X times Y times four. Here, we're just gonna do X times Y. Let's just go for it. All right. So <clears throat> in the in the uh in the this header they have like compressed block BC3. We're gonna do this. So we are gonna do then we are gonna do All right, but then we need one of these, we need one of these, uh, what did I do that for? Stride is normally like how much does it take to go out basically the width and for us it's the same as X. If uh, actually it's this. Because I think we're just. Yeah, we're we're describing this data, not the output data.
see if that compiles real quick. It did. Whoa. All right. So then the next step is. So we want to use we want to use this. Uh, so target should chill texture two D. This should be zero. We're not, we don't care about mint maps. Right now. Internal format. Uh, this, oh, I think it's this, right? We saw that. Let's, let's just try it. We'll figure it out. What is border? What the heck did I just press? Border value must be zero. Boom. I like that. Why make it an argument though? Like why make it a parameter you have to pass in? Image size. Okay. That this this should just be x times y. And here's the most, um, well, here's the thing. All right. Uh, shit. I wish, I I wish there was a faster way to format this. This is extreme tedious. Why? Cause I decided to cut and paste. Cause I decided to cut and paste. I have to keep looking down at my keyboard cause it's just, I don't know this keyboard very well. It's a Kinesis split keyboard and yeah, I don't know. All right, this is what, this, this is the thing. All right, let's get rid of that one. Oh, let's put our, Let's put our debugging macro here. Uh, once we do that, let's remember to do. Uh... Oh. Oh, the DLL was not found. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's, that's that whole thing. We can fix that. Hopefully I hit uh, copy, not cut. Yeah. So 
So far, so good. And this is a special image I made sure it's square. Oh, it worked. Tight. All right. Oh, frame buffer is not complete. Hmm. Huh, wait. Uh, why did it say that? I mean, it worked, but it doesn't look good, right? I, you know, there's the image. Frame buffer is not complete. I wonder why. Let's see. So we bind the texture. We call this. What's it missing? The good news is it sort of worked. <laughs> All right, how about what we do is this. I wonder if I wait what I should be doing. Seems like I should be doing it with the semicolon on the inside. So that way later, if I want to, like, you know, I don't want these GL calls. Like, let's say eventually. Oh, hey, hi in the chat. Sorry, I didn't see your message for a few minutes there. Um, yeah, that it could be. Uh, let me just uh Um, you see in me go over here because that's where my laptop is. That's my streaming computer. I, here's where I'm binding it right here. Uh, and then I do the then I'm doing the check before I unbind it. So I, I didn't used to be getting this. So I'm suspecting what happened is uh, when I switched from using GL text image to two text image 2D to using GL compressed text image 2D, I'm guessing there's something about this that I'm not doing right so that this check frame buffer status is incorrect. That's my current like thing I think is happening. So uh yeah, if you're still here and you're interested. You can drop a follow, and I think you'll be like the first person to see my uh, see my new follower alert that I added. <laughs> oh, there it is! I just looked that up. <laughs> Thanks, that's awesome. So you do you do graphics programming? Are you familiar with this stuff? You see me looking over here because like that's where I can see the chat, so I should. Look at the camera. What's your what's your familiarity with OpenGL and uh, Oh, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm just, you know, like I 
I'm familiar enough to be dangerous with it. <laughs> and so the other night I was like, huh, I wonder how you like use a compressed texture instead of an uncompressed texture. And so like I'm doing the stuff here where I load in just some kind of PNG or JPEG and then I'm allocating some space and then I'm using this I'm using this function to compress the uncompressed data into compressed. Uh, and the library, I mean, I don't know how long you've been in the stream, but uh, the library I'm using is uh, this IS, this game tech dev ISPC texture compressor. So yeah, I hook, I, yeah, I hooked all that up into my project using CMake, I've got, I'm um, bind, I, yeah, I'm dynamically linking to the, to the uh, DLL. Got the include here, so I just, yeah, so anyway, that, that's, that's all just describing where I get this compression function. So I'm guessing, yeah, there's something I'm doing wrong here, but let me recompile it now that I've added that one debug call. So, Cool, you're building what's your plans with building an engine? Like what kind of what kind of thing are you thinking? I'm just gonna make Pong right now. But like I'm trying to kind of build an editor, so like I have an editor and I can make the game Pong. And then like if that works out, I'll go like make something more exciting than Pong. Just trying to keep ambition in check. <laughs> just trying to be realistic with how much time there is in a day. Alright, let's see that compiled so let's see what happens when we run it right now i would say i'm in a very experimental phase just trying to figure out how some things work huh okay so that time we didn't get the message but i'm guessing it's because i'm guessing it's because this uh this doesn't do what we want, so uh, let's let's bring this back. Yeah, I hear you. Like for me, the fascinating part is less like building. Like building the engine, building an editor, and like there's just so many diff there's just so many different things that go into it, like importing assets and figuring out how to compress one. Uh serial serialization, that's something I want to get to. Uh building like a rendering API, you know, there's just so much that goes into it. Like I don't really have that many ideas for games, but just like working on engines, game engines is really fascinating to me. So that's the part that's enjoyable to me um let's see i'm guessing we're gonna get the message now here we go yeah all right so let me go see if i can find like an example uh an example here so one thing i'm possibly thinking is that this format this format i'm passing it is wrong that's it's one thing I'm. That's one thing I suspect. Yeah. So let me go see if I can find an example of example of using this. Oops. Yep. Yeah, I think you're right. So uh, let's see. Let's see. We were just looking at the documentation on this. So internal format specifies the format of the image. So when we looked at image format, internal image format, Internal format must be known, a known image compression.
Huh. What is... I didn't see this before when I was reading it. Uh, where did that go? Internal format. Git texel level parameter. Uh, and now this is... Don't think I don't think this helps us right now. Huh. If you've done this before, do you know of a way like with with textures um it, there's this gel map buffer. Do you have you ever like used this as like a way to like to map a texture and pass it data? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Just curious because like I was expecting to be able to like bind the frame buffer then call map buffer and get a point and and be able to like yeah map the buffer and then pass it the data but that didn't work uh i'll have to like come back and and learn more about that all right so let's go back to geo compress it's like is it let's see if he's got something about Impressed. No. Bummer. Here we go. This one. Huh? Let's see. These guys have press. Compressed texture. Oh, here we go. I think we did this. Yeah, I think our format that we specified is wrong. Wonder what this buffer plus offset is. Oh, offset zero. So let's try this. Cause I think we are doing DXT five. That's what that library specifically does. So that would make sense that this isn't. All right, well, it compiled. Always a confidence inspiring step. Hey, -o. oh, frame buffer is not complete, but that looks way better than last time. Like, look at that and remember what it looks like. <laughs> Here. Uh, Yeah, so if, if we undo that and use this one. Like, look how bad that looks. So we definitely fixed something by getting the right format. Uh, yeah, so that looks way better. 
Uh, that's good. Yeah, and the way I kind of knew is DXT5 was a little bit of context, like, I I chose B3, yeah, so in here I'm choosing compress blocks BC3, and I knew from looking at this compressor I'm using that BC3 is DXT5. So that's kind of how then when I was looking at that tutorial and it mentioned this, I was like, oh, OK, yeah, I had the wrong thing. So let's see, what else do they have? So they they generate the texture. Let's let's just make sure I've got all the things that these guys have. Close all. So. We've got the gen textures. We've got the bind texture. All right. So. Texture 2D, we're not doing any MIP maps. Maybe, maybe this is invalid. Maybe this stuff is invalid for what we're doing. Because I didn't really think about that. Oops. Uh oh, I gotta close. <laughs> uh, let's do two things. Let's get the let's get this back in there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Offset, yeah, that makes sense if I was doing MIP maps. Yeah, and from the tutorial, yeah, that makes sense. That does make some sense. I, I think that. Uh-oh. Now it's totally messed up. <laughs> now it didn't even display. Uh-oh. All right, so let's bring this back. Okay, so it's not that frame, so error frame buffer. Let's see, all right, so size. Maybe my size is wrong, like. They're doing a more advanced calculation here of width plus three. Times block size. Oh. Yeah, I think because the the block size. Yeah, let's uh let's do a sim let's do a similar um calculation to that cuz I just naively I didn't really hmm that probably means like my calculation here could be wrong too. This is something like from the very beginning of the stream I was unsure of how much uh, space to allocate for the compressed texture. Although I'm surprised that we don't get any kind of like bug associated with that. So like, it would seem as though we would get a bug if we would have some kind of like Hmm. Well, let's just uh let's borrow this for now. Cause this is something this is something I was wanting to pick figure out. So we'll be like X 
And I, I think this calculation is based on like knowledge about like this, yeah, the size that the compression returns. So yeah, and block size should be 16 because we're doing DXT5. All right. So I, th I think what we want to do here is do size. And then here we want to do size. All right. That is something I was wanting. I'll have to look up, do a little bit of offline research about like how to calculate the size of a compressed texture. Uh, how to pre-calculate the size of a compressed texture. Okay. Still says it's not complete. Hmm. Uh, Oh. Despite being color formats, compressed images are not color renderable for all therefore attaching a crest. Huh. Uh, so maybe we don't, maybe since we're using a compressed texture, we are, we don't need to do this frame buffer part. Let's first off go to that open jail wiki. Cause that sounded pretty useful. What did it, what did it say in there? All right, so by being color formats or not. All right, so I bet if we go back to this open jail tutorial, where did it go? It's not this one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I lost the tutorial. I don't know where it went. Too many tabs. There, here it is. No, their tab just their page just looks like documentation. <laughs> All right. So here you can see they ah. they do do the texture stuff, but they don't do frame buffer object. Okay which lines up. So we don't need this. We don't need this, which means we don't need this. And we don't need this. And we don't need this. Cool. That was it. All right. So. Okay. So yeah, that that actually makes sense because I think what this is basically saying here is you can't come. You can't attach one of these. You can't attach a uh, GL compressed text image. You can't attach that to a frame buffer because a frame buffer is something that can get rendered into like as part of your graphics pipeline, you can render into your frame buffer. And 
you can't do that with a compressed image. So a compressed image is not compatible with being attached to a frame buffer, which is what this stuff that we commented out, like especially this, this line right here that we commented out, like this was specifically attaching our texture to the frame buffer. Yeah, okay, so that all makes sense. That's cool, Lots learning lots of stuff. And I'm guessing that this size, if we debug that, it's going to be the same as x times y. That's my guess. I'm going to go check. Oh. I need to pass it I need to pass it the So it's like programming at your day job or you got like other things that you do just interested in programming for making a game engine. Let's see. I wanted to see right here. So I'm guessing, uh, so we have X. Oops, turn off hexadecimal display. Oh, well, yeah, I know the size of this image. Yeah, so. OK, cool, cool. I'm guessing that x times y is the same as size. Yeah, it's the same as size. It's like x plus 3. What is this calculation doing? X plus three divided by four plus Y times three divided by four times 16. Yeah, <laughs> this is silly because you're, you got your four, you got basically you got X over four times Y over four. Well, that's 16. So you, the 16, the yeah, you have 16 in the denominator and 16 on in the numerator, so those cancel out. I don't know why the x plus 3, though. Like, the plus 3 part doesn't totally make sense to me. I would have expected size to be a little bit bigger because of the plus 3. Uh, interesting. But if our, but like initially when I was passing in X times Y here, if that hadn't been the right calculation, for sure this function would have crashed because it would have been like, I don't have enough space to, to allocate, like to put the contents. So anyway, cool, 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 cool. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'm a, Programmer by day, uh, working on a yeah. I, I do work on a game engine at work, um, but you know when you work on a big code base, there's like so much stuff you only ever and it's you know you kind of have to specialize and only know one part of it. So I like working on this at home, uh, so that I get to work on more parts. I get to write the whole thing. I don't have to use other people's parts of the code base. No. But yep, day job. Program during the day. And then go home and program some more at night. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh, at this point, I've achieved what I wanted to initially. Like, just I figured out how to 
compress texture data and then pass it to OpenGL. So the stream's goals for today have been accomplished. If you're a little bit curious about the setup, you know, I'm in really early stages. Like there's not much code here really. Um I'm using I'm using SDL as like the hardware layer. Like, you know, the the hardware or I don't know if it's the platform layer, that's what it is. The platform layer. Uh I'm using I am dear I am GUI for the for the UI. And so I mean I pretty like all this stuff I pretty much copied from the I am GUI demo. And so the other day on one of the other streams, um I was curious how do you deal with drag and drop? So like you notice on stream, uh, shoot, I, I did not intend to open this. Yeah, one thing I'm doing is I'm just, I'm able to like just take this and drag and drop it in. So like that was the stream from the other day. I wanted to figure out how that works. So, uh, and that is right here. So SDL kind of takes care of picking up the event for us. So we just have to like add some logic. So obviously if for real, I would never want to do all this stuff right here. We would just want to like record the event and probably the file name and then like push some kind of load pipeline on, you know, into some kind of work queue, but that's all way down the road. So I figured out that drag and drop. And then I was like, well, I want to learn about compressed textures. Like how do you do it? And, uh, and that's what we've achieved so far. And then uh, for the UI, that's I am GUI, and it's got like these two windows that can dock into the main window. So you can imagine, um, obviously, kind of making it look like Unity. <laughs> you know, you got your scene view and then probably contents over here. So I did that with I am GUI, and that is all. That's all this code here. And the the texture that we created up there, we passed the handle to that texture to I am GUI right here. And that, that's how I am GUI is able to add the image that we're rendering with the texture from OpenGL. We pass it to I am GUI right here, basically. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, it seems like I am GUI is pretty common these days. It's nice and easy to get up and going with. So I did do, um, I'm using OpenGL in this project right now, but there was another project I did. Pretty much the exact same thing, but it's, use, it's using, uh, I was using Vulkan and it's like, just doing what we're doing right now, it's like so, like this file is like 2,000 lines long. It was so hard to get the Vulcan stuff going. So, but it does, it does work. Uh, let's see. This is, this is the OpenGL, or no, not uh, OpenGL. This is the Vulcan version of basically the same thing. I mean, but this one I managed to, you know, like I did a few more things. I've got like a 3D model. I've got this gizmo. Something's wrong with my projection camera, though, my projection matrix. So like as you move things forward, they scale. They get really scaled. Really. Yeah, like I don't think that that's quite right there. I haven't fixed that. Anyway, I decided to abandon Vulkan for now because there's just like a lot of other stuff I want to do and Vulkan consumes a lot of time like learning how, and de learning it and debugging it. So I abandoned that project for now. Yeah. Vulkan, like if I had something, if I was doing something advanced, that really needed Vulcan, I would do it. 
But since I'm just tinkering around and more interested in like trying to get an overall engine going, just doesn't seem worth it. You know, there's more things I want to learn than just Vulcan. So anyway, yeah, it's too complex for me right now. When I get to something where I'm like, oh, Vulcan would be useful for this, then I'll do Vulcan. But for now, no. Yep. Oh, cool. You have ECS. You got shadow mapped. Yeah, I haven't really implemented any, like, never. I've never implemented any shadow stuff, so that's definitely on my list of things to do. Physically based rendering pipeline, that's really cool. I've only done the really basic bong shading, which of course is so outdated, like nobody's using that anyway. So I definitely need to get the, the PBR. Skybox is cool. Have you done like a, is your Skybox literally a box? Or are you using, are you, did you implement it using a sphere? So I, I've noticed that. I think I was looking at some Unreal code and like their Skybox is on a sphere instead of a, instead of an actual box, which is cool. I don't know if, what the overall advantages of that would be. I'll have to take a look at why you would want to use a sphere for your skybox geometry. Cool. Sounds like you've, you've gone a pretty long way on your engine. You're way ahead of me, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm going at a snail's pace. But it's mostly because I'm like, hmm, how does that work? And then I spend like two days figuring out how it works. But the point is to learn. So it's, you know, that so it's it's fun. Hmm, OK. Yeah, global lighting. I haven't done any global lighting either. Rendering, there's so much stuff to do in, in rendering. Well, I'm typically streaming on like Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Tonight was a special stream because my evening opened up, but I usually stream Tuesdays and Wednesdays starting around 10, 1030 central time. Mm -hmm program for like an hour or two so uh thanks for i'm gonna end the stream now but thanks a lot for stopping by and maybe i'll uh see you around next week where we continue building out an engine so uh, yeah i'm gonna go ahead and sign off thanks for stopping by